If you love the bins and you love thrifting and you like to thrift to resell, then today's video should be a lot of fun for you. Friends. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Veronica. If you're new here, welcome. I am a part-time reseller. I sell on Poshmark, eBay, Macari, and Depop. And I love sourcing pre-owned clothing and shoes and sometimes hard goods from the Goodwill outlet, also known as the Goodwill bins, where my cost of goods generally stays really, really low, like below $1.50 uh, per item. So I went back to the bins this past weekend to source for my online stores and uh, to get some new inventory up and running. So grab some coffee, grab some water, Water, stay hydrated, get some listings done. Maybe you're watching this as you're photographing or steaming and I can keep you company or you're just hanging out on the couch and need somebody to talk at you. In any case, happy to help. Uh, I mostly picked up clothing on this most recent bins haul. I spent $60 and some change. I have not done the math yet to see what my average cost of goods is. I will pop that somewhere over here or over here or anywhere on the screen. Uh, once I've calculated that, once I've actually counted, and I primarily picked up clothing this time. I picked up a few things for personal use, primarily for my kid in terms of clothing anyway, and then a whole bunch of like hard goods and hard goods adjacent items that I'm going to be using to decorate my home, to do some DIY craft projects, etc. And if you into that sort of thing i am happy to announce that i have started a second channel um i will link it down below and also pop it on here it's called the moody maximalist and training and i will share you know things like this gallery wall that you can see behind me that I pretty much created uh, almost exclusively out of thrifted items or uh, DIY projects or just upcycled uh, items. And I will share crafts and things around my house that make me a moody maximalist, sometimes a little more moody leaning, sometimes a little bit more maximalist leaning. Um, and I hope that you will join me on that channel for that journey as well, if that's your cup of tea. There will be thrift flips, there will be upcycling, there will just be craft projects gone wrong honestly because I have those so it's just gonna be a smorgasbord on my little journey to become uh, a little bit more of a craftier person if you will I need a coffee before we get started all right let's go um, I want to start with the clothing just because the hard goods and shoes that I picked up I haven't done anything with those so they're just as dusty as they were um, when I picked them up from the bins so let's start with clothing because most of the stuff it has been washed unless it is new with tags or it's like a cashmere wool blend situation which i have in here um and let me just start with that one maybe those items i don't wash i just disinfect and clean and steam and all of that this has fuzz all over but it is a wonderful and wonderfully warm jacket by banana republic and it's italian wool and cashmere and it's a size extra large Debated keeping that, but I have another similar one that I also picked up from the bins that I have not yet worn. So it's it's really just a black jacket uh, with a zipper, zip up jacket. So just a good classic uh, piece to have for your colder climates. Then I picked up another like blazer type jacket, which I was going to sell and then I tried it on and I was like, Veronica, you've been looking for a dark green sort of blazer, more of a blazer than a jacket, but this is definitely a uh, kind of in between. It's new with tags. It's by a brand I've never heard of, but probably not going to be super great. It's the brand Craft and Soul. I have not looked this up. Uh, but look at this beauty in dark green. I mean, talk about moody maximalism. This, like the floral, dark floral lining and this dark green is that that right there. That's the vision board for me. Okay. Love this so much. Um, I tried it on. It's a little tight on me. I think it's an extra large. I forgot, it doesn't say on here. She is likely going to be mine. I'm gonna put her, I'm gonna steam her, put her in my closet and see how often I'm actually gonna wear her. Uh, we're going into the warmer months, so probably not as much right now, but come fall, I wanna see like how often do I actually wear this jacket? Um, and if I don't reach for it and the tags are still on by, you know, November, December, I'll just list it. The beauty of thrifting. All right, this one is a completely different mood. It's a pair of uh, men's board shorts that still have the little Goodwill tag, even though I washed it and checked for these, but here we are. So this one, I pulled it out and didn't really think it was gonna be anything. Then I saw the tag and that 
brand is Billionaire, Billionaire Boys Club, which I thought I'd heard of. Um, and somewhere in my brain, a little voice said, I think that's good. Toss it in the uh, cart and look it up later. So it has their logo all over. I have not run this through Google Lens, but I've seen other uh, board shorts of theirs. It's one of those brands where it's like it either sells for like 20 bucks or like 80 bucks. It's definitely high retail. Um, but from the bins, honestly, even if it does sell for 20, that's still good. So I'll keep you posted on how this one's doing for me. But yeah, I definitely figured it's lightweight. Let's bring her home. Another swimwear piece. Um, I don't pick up a lot of swimwear that's not new with tags unless it's plus size or unless it's really cute and like a straight size. This is a one piece and it definitely has a lot going on. A lot of like openness. Oh no. Oh no. Well, yeah. So now that I'm holding it up to the light, and I don't know if I can show you this, I definitely see some of the issues with this. I don't know if you guys can see this, but there are the lines kind of like when you, yep, now you can see it, when you wear something out. So I'll definitely have to disclose that. I don't think it's gonna be a huge issue unless it's somebody wearing it who would stretch it out. Uh, it's a Kona sole, size extra large, one piece bathing suit. I'll see, I'll have to run comms on this particular style. If they're not great, I'll just re-donate it. But yeah, some of these things, like you would not see this. I mean, my bins have good lighting, but literally the only way I could see this was holding it up to my ring light. So other than that, great condition, very cute. Might just sell it for a little bit less. This one I pulled out and I was like, I don't care what brand this is, but um, we're bringing back the Sasquatch, Bigfoot, Yeti, whatever sweater. Like we're bringing this home. Brand does not matter. Um, the brand is Lucky Brand. I don't know if that's good or bad at this point <laughs> because Lucky Brand is just not that exciting to me anymore. Um, this particular sweater seems to be doing okay. Uh, it's a, what's it called? Shareless fleece, uh, softest knitwear, gray label. I don't know what that means. Uh, extra large. It's a fun graphic Sasquatch sweatshirt, sweater, whatever. How can you not pick that up at the bins? Um, these next, this next item is going to be a project. And I think it's already been a project, to be honest. Um, if you know your clothing and your jeans, you know this logo. This is a pair of True Religion jeans. They are a size 30. Uh, they are the Rocco Relax Skinny jeans. And the thing is, they are worn. They have paint splatter. They're distressed. They've seen better days, let's be honest. Um, but I thought they were cool enough for an upcycle project. Uh, they definitely have like those issues here at the, whatchamacallit, pockets. So maybe I can patch that up, but yeah, these are gonna be a project jean. Um, I like the style of these, honestly, they're kind of cool. Not for me personally, but I've been wanting to do a little bit more um, with upcycling clothing as well and just trying out a few techniques and a few things. I'm hoping to get myself a sewing machine and teach myself how to sew. Uh, we'll see how that goes. So if I do that, that kind of content might end up over on the second channel or it might end up here or honestly on both. Why not? Another sweater, very cute, plus size, but it pocket. Uh, this is a Parish Nation, which is a brand I picked up once before, and it does okay. I think last time I picked one of those up, it sold quickly on Macari. It's a 2X. I think they do mostly plus size, at least looking at the comps, that's what I've been seeing. It's mostly plus size sweaters, so we love that. Also, if you hear like weird noises, it's my neighbors walking around upstairs. It's apartment living. Um, this is just for my kid as a pair of Cat and Jack jogger pants. I got him a few pairs of pants and uh, a cute pajama. This is like a Thanksgiving theme, but honestly, who cares? It's definitely fall themed, but we don't care what we wear to sleep because nobody will see us. So either way, my kid grows out of stuff so quickly. Okay, this one, somebody threw these back and it's a good reminder that not everybody's looking for the same stuff at the bins. I look at stuff that will sell and will sell fast. This person did not. These are uh, Ariat jeans, good condition. I didn't see any flaws with these. They are a relaxed boot cut in a size 35, 34 length. That's a little close. <laughs> so yeah, um, happy with these, honestly excited. Ariat jeans always sell fast for me. 
this one we'll see how she does uh, i was looking for this brand because everybody was talking about it um especially people who sell active wear and once i started finding it i felt like okay it's not selling that well for me but we'll see how this one does this is a zaya active hoodie this is how you spell zaya and it's a size small i don't know we'll see that's a basic black hoodie with the logo i mean that's literally all of this but it feels good it feels substantial so somebody might like that um i just listed a bunch of zaya active leggings that i got at my honey hole so we'll see how those do uh this is also from my kid just a pair of jeans they are abercrombie kids jeans so if he doesn't wear them i might list them but i've, I've given up on listing kids clothing honestly for the most part this one's kind of a cool vintagey retro 90s looking like reminding me of those color block windbreakers it's not a jacket but it's basically like a, a pullover popover whatever uh it's dark green and cream colored beige light cream whatever ivory and it is by j crew it was one of the oldest j crew tags i've ever seen so there goes that it's made in malaysia 100 percent cotton uh size large don't think it has a year anywhere but yeah, I mean, if I I might have to look up this tag just to see just how old this is. But I thought it was so cool, honestly. Like, I feel like the girlies are going to wear that. Um, or embracing Y2K and even 90s style. I don't know. Um, this one was one of the first pieces I picked up. It's a Tommy Bahama. And <laughs> when I picked this up, I thought it was going to be a crappy day because just things were just not looking good. But then I found some good stuff. So just a basic Tommy Bahama. This brand does so-so for me, but it usually doesn't sit super long, um, depending on the piece, of course. What are you? Oh, this is another item that I looked up because I wasn't sure it sounded like something good, um, but I really do not have any experience with it. It also has fuzz on it that I now need to remove. Um, this is a pair of Tilly shorts, and as you can tell from the logo, they, I think, primarily make hats. Uh, again, these retail super high. Just some men's four shorts. Resale is so-and-so. I think 25. I can probably get it. I get 25 out of that. Um, assuming I don't find any flaws. Now that I've washed them and gotten them ready. This one, you can probably tell. It's a pair of Miss Me's. Uh, they are the Metarize Skinny. No idea if that's going to be a problem or if there's a market for these. Who the hell knows? Uh, if I find Miss Me's at the bins, I'll usually pick them up if they're in decent condition. And again, somebody had thrown these back. I looked them over. I tested the zipper. That's one of the things you always want to do with anything that does have a zipper. Um, even down to like zippered pockets. I don't always check that. Uh, I think it's less of an issue. But if you have something that zips up and the zipper is the closure method, test that zipper. If it has buttons, make sure all the buttons are there. All right, this one is one of my favorite brands that nobody talks about, <laughs> I feel like. If people do, let me know in the comments. I don't watch everybody's videos, so I don't know if other people are talking about this brand. Um, it's the first time I found this brand with the uh, brand name written in this fashion. Normally it's more like printed, but this is more of a cursive. Uh, the brand is Janu, two A's, two U's. This is a size medium. And they make uh, medical wear, scrubs and such, but they make them really cute, like on a figs level of quality and cuteness i would say and uh, just like figs these sell like hotcakes for me i have 100 percent sulfur rate on this brand uh, i found it a bunch of times i think twice i found the pants and then this is the second top um i'm finding again this logo i think maybe the older logo i don't know um but cute so like that this one i haven't comped yet but i just picked it up because it's the bins and i need to lace it up again up here but it's a pair of reebok shorts and you might say oh reebok why um because crossfit and like crossfit people i feel like need to let everybody know that they're doing crossfit so maybe this is what they wear not sure but the logo is down here i also feel like i've heard people talk about different like active wear brands doing like crossfit products and that those do better i don't know if reebok is one of them like i said i have not looked up this particular uh style of short um for Reebok so even if it's not good I'll probably get 15 bucks for it and if it's good I get more so I'm making profit either way if it sells 
This one, my favorite bread and butter bread. You may have guessed it if you've been here for a while. Wow, I'm looking for this tag. Where is that? Oh, here we go. Torrid. Still love her. Still pick her up, especially from the bins. But this is a size three, so 3X. Torrid. Again, the dark florals. I love them. So yeah, uh, just, a, just a kind of boxy short sleeve blouse. Uh, Torrid tops don't go for that much, but from the bins, I'll pick them up. I have another swimwear piece, and again, it's not new with tags. But I thought it was a cute with the crochet situation in the back. And it is an airy swim one piece in a size small. I have a whole bunch of information on this tag. Airy, uh, I usually don't uh, don't pick up unless it's like the offline active wear line. Could these people be any louder? All right, then I picked up a few brassiers. Okay, this one kind of like a long line, almost like a corset bra, except not that long. Very cute with the plaid. Uh, this is an Adore Me. Again, not something I usually seek out or pick up, but it was in good shape. Uh, it's a 3060 and it was just really adorable. Kind of as the name suggests. Um, I actually found the matching like panties for this one, but because they were not new with tags, I debated. They look clean and everything, but I was like, yeah, I can't do it. I can't, I just, I can't do it. We're just gonna sell the bra. We're not gonna sell it as a set with pre-owned underoos. Like, we're not gonna do that. Uh, I do have my limits, okay? Some people don't even pick up bras, I do. But underoos is a different story. You could ask me, um, why are you picking up swimwear then? Good question. Probably because I feel like swimwear, I mean, you spend less time in your uh, bathing suit and a lot of times you wear them in water that has a lot of chlorine in it or salt if you go into the beach. Anyway, that's how I'm justifying, you know, swimwear being less problematic. I mean, anything can be washed and like steamed and put in a dryer, okay? But I'm not gonna sell pre-owned underwear on the internet. There's a sound bite for you if you need one. Um, okay, this one is a torrid bra, again, with the dark florals, but I would have picked this one up regardless of the print. Um, Torrid Curve, size 44C. Again, I do like to pick up plus size bras specifically. They usually sell well, especially the Torrid ones. So for Torrid, um, I pick up most of their items if they're affordable enough, but I really prefer their swimwear, their bras, and their activewear. Uh, jeans used to be doing well, not so much anymore. So I'll pick up Torrid jeans at the bins, but at the thrift where they charge me $7 for them, probably not. All right, what do we have here? A pair of jeans, pants, whatever. Oh yeah, uh, these are so it's a pair of like baggy cargo pants by the brand CQR. And I've picked up this brand once before, also at the bins, listed it, and it sold on Macari for full price. Like I wanna say in the 30s or 40s. Wasn't new with tags or anything, and it sold relatively quickly. And so I had, and I had looked it up when I got home and I was like, it's sold on Amazon, I don't know why that's sold so quickly on Macari. This is a 42W. Um, I will say these are good quality. And I did look at some comps and comps still look pretty good for this brand, like in the $30 range. So I don't know, these are also pretty cool. Like they're like the baggy cargo vibe where I feel like they are men's pants, but um, some women might want to wear those and just have that whole like baggy look. Uh, I went to Goodwill yesterday, not the outlet. And uh, just saw some of the girlies, you know, the the uh, early 20s, um, late teens girlies walking around looking for stuff. And they're all in their like baggy 90s, like Aaliyah and TLC style jeans. So I was like, it is, it's all coming back. And that trend, I don't mind coming back. All right, this one, I have to comp it to the side if I want to keep it or not. <laughs> it's funny that I found this one because the day before I went to the bins, I was watching one of my shows and one of the uh, cast members was wearing this like, um, kind of like an aviator jacket, but like it had this like sunrise pattern. Um, and apparently this jacket was worn by a lot of people and it's super popular and it's like $200. So I did not find that, but I did find something that reminded me of that with this whole like colorful rainbow situation. And honestly, I might keep this for myself. It's like a super soft micro fleece situation too. Um, the brand is Jules. I don't know if this like 
the same as Mason Jewels or Maison Jewels or whatever. I don't know if this is the same brand. I feel like I've seen this tag before, but I don't know. It just says Jewels clothing, tried, trusted, fit for land and sea. I don't know. It just, it feels nice. It looks cute. So I was like, either I will sell it or I will keep it for myself. It is a size extra large, I think. B -b -b 16, size 16. So we'll see. Um, TBD if I'm keeping that or not. Again, going into the warmer months, I will not get wear of it anytime soon. So well, we shall see. This one is a brand I also don't really pick up, but it's new with tags. It's like one of those Fashion Nova brands. I think it's owned by Boohoo now, which did you guys know that uh, Karen Millen is owned by Boohoo? I didn't know that until recently. Somebody posted it in a Poshmark thrifting group. I was like, huh, interesting. Maybe that's why she's not selling for me anymore. I mean, that was, that's a designer brand and Boohoo owns it. That is wild. Okay, pretty little thing. Size US 24. That's kind of why I picked it up because it is definitely a big old plus size pair of olive green faux leather pants. Straight leg, pretty straight. I mean, I feel like when you're plus size, like myself, straight leg pants always end up being like a tapered leg. So yeah, um, I don't know. I, I have trouble finding a true straight leg pant that accounts for the curves that most plus size people have, but that's neither here nor there. Um, this one's not anything crazy, but it's new with tags, so, and a larger size. It's a Croft & Barrow classic fit, easy care casual pant. Retails for 28 bucks. How much am I gonna get for it? 15, maybe? I don't know. But yeah, it's a size 34 in case I didn't say that. So like borderline plus size. I think these are men's, but again, a woman could wear them. Did I test the zipper? No, I did not. I just gave you this whole spiel about testing the zipper, and then I didn't test this one because I was new with hex and because I didn't pay attention, but zips up, all good. Yeah, sometimes these kinds of like dressy pants, like business casual pants, do really well for me and sell really fast for me. I just sold a pair of ASOS, ASOS, whatever, uh, pants that was also new with tags and uh, it sold really fast, it, which is surprising for that brand. All right, this one excited me. It was at the very bottom of a bin, which yes, goes to show that you should dig all the way to the bottom, but also if you're getting exhausted from digging through piles and piles of clothing, don't let anyone make you feel bad for not digging all the way to the bottom because I almost never do. Um, glad I did with this one though. It's a Gymshark new with tags top. It's the camo seamless long sleeve crop top black small. Here's the thing with Gymshark. Uh, it doesn't sell for as much anymore. I don't know how it does new with tags. I uh, also don't know how the tops do because I don't think I've ever found a Gymshark top. It's usually uh, the leggings. Um, I'm excited that it's not with tags and everything. The problem is uh, Poshmark has been removing my Gymshark listings even when I do not have a stock photo up. So I don't know what it is that dirks them or what's a copyright infringement. Maybe it's the logo in the pictures. Maybe it's the fact that I'm listing the style name. I don't know, but I've just stopped listing uh, Gymshark to Poshmark. And because I list on multiple platforms, it's not really a big deal because I can still list it to eBay, Macari, Depop, Facebook Marketplace if I want to. The thing is, though, that I feel like Poshmark is the best place to sell Gymshark, so I don't know. But I picked her up anyway because she's new with tags. And then one more clothing item, and then we have shoes and hard goods. Uh, this is also new with tags, otherwise I would not have picked it up. It's a one-piece uh, Shane Shore. Yeah, sold at Target. Nothing super crazy, but does retail for 50 bucks. Uh, mystical purple, okay. It's a size 32 triple D uh, swimsuit, one piece swimsuit. Again, kind of like open in all the areas. Straps in the back, floral, cute. Has the liner still in here. Yeah, new with tags, everything. Everything checks out with this. So going to spring, summer, this is the kind of stuff I will pick up. 
editing Veronica here. There were actually three more clothing items that I picked up, but they were hanging up to dry, so I couldn't include them in the video and completely forgot about them. But I picked up two of these Miss Sook uh, cardigan jacket. This is a brand that has no business being as expensive as it is because it's just acrylic knit, but here we are. Um, and then I also picked up this adorable vintage girls jacket. It's by the brand Rothschild. I have never heard of this before. I will include the tag here. Uh, comps are looking promising, so I'm excited for all of these items. All right, uh, let's look at shoes and hard goods real quick. All right, these I picked up for personal use. They're like little placemats, and it's a set of four. So this is what they look like. Um, I don't really have a use for four placemats because I don't even have a table it fits for people to be honest i have one that fits two um but i feel like i can probably use like two of these as placemats and then maybe use two for like uh and like crafty project diy project maybe some wall art i haven't decided yet i just i saw these and i was like they're lightweight um and i can make use of these this one i will also upcycle a little bit it's a little like i mean i'm assuming that's what it's supposed to be it's it's just like something to hold your pens uh, and office supplies. You could also use it for like makeup brushes, but it is wood, so if it gets wet, I don't know. Um, you could probably also use it this way and put like flat things in there. I don't know what you would put in there, maybe like yarn or things like that. Anyway, the applications are endless, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna upcycle that, um, paint it in a different color because I do not care about this like honey beige wood color. Um, I'll, I'll sand it down and you know, paint it and all of that. Uh, and that's probably a project you will see over on the other channel. Uh, next up, we, okay, these are not hard goods, but they were in with the hard goods. It's basically a bunch of silkies, uh, tights, and I think they're all a size extra large. So extra large, queen, off black, barely black, control, top, got four of these. Yeah, they're all an extra large. This one's an extra large tall. Yeah, all silkies, like pantyhose. Um, so I have four. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lock them up and sell them for God knows what. I don't think I'm gonna get a ton for these. They're not that expensive, but they were lightweight and I was like, they're new with tags. Somebody's gonna look for them, especially because they're a larger size. Also for crafting, I picked up these like half beads. I've seen people do cool little projects with them. Um, and they're already clipped in half, so it's kind of neat to glue these onto things. So I was like, yep, that goes in the craft stash. And then this one, I will also probably treat it somewhere. It's just a wooden bowl. I don't know if this is food safe or not. If I do anything with it and end up putting food in there, I would have to make it food safe, which I don't know if I want to do that. Um, I might use it for some succulents. I haven't decided. I will figure it out. But yeah, I love this. It's just like a cute cool piece that can hold a lot of different things but yeah I need to clean it up and you know at the very least give it a good clean and then see what we're gonna do this one is a blank canvas <laughs> super exciting um again it's super lightweight it does have like a little bit smudge on there but I'm gonna use this and, and paint something on there so it does not need to be pristine and then this is a bunch of is it Martha Stewart yeah Martha Stewart crafts stencils like floral stencils uh which is pretty cool because i've been looking for stencils so i don't know if you can really see these but this is basically what one of them looks like so yeah i can um use stencils for lots and lots of things there's like a dragonfly on here and like florals so kind of my vibe um so yeah that came in handy and then also a hard good that i use for crafting as you can see over here in my little picture, uh, corks, just bottle corks, uh, wine corks, wine bottle corks, which I need more of because I would like to do like a, a, a um, what's it called? Like a bulletin board kind of thing, but using those like corks and like maybe cut them in half. Uh, so uh, something like that. So I still have a few left over from this project that I got for free. But when I saw these, um, they were kind of coming out of the bag. So I just kind of gathered as many as I could, put them in the bag and picked it up. All right, shoes and then we're done. First pair, I'm going to list with the nasty insoles, but also tell people maybe you want to remove them. They're honestly not that nasty. I'll clean them up. Clean them up. They're just a little bit worn. Um, these are Berkey's by Birkenstock. 
And the thing with Birkenstock is I'm kind of over it, honestly. Birkenstock, um, just like their regular leather sandals, have not been selling for me. And some of the ones I have are not in great condition, which I feel like used to not be a big deal. They would still sell. Now I have them down to like 25 bucks and they're still not selling. So I'm staying away from picking up Birkenstock unless they're in really, really great condition and like, you know, I can get them at a good price. Um, but these are the Birkies. These, uh, I've sold these before with like a, like a fleece liner, a removable one, and they sold super fast. So I'll just wipe these down. I will clean the insole, but there's no fixing that like wear on the fabric. So, I don't know, some people may not mind, or they can just replace it. And then I picked up some boots by Kelsey Dagger, which I do like to pick up. Um, let me see if I can show you the logo. Let me show you the boot first. Um, yeah, it doesn't have anything on the bottom. So it's like a knee-high, possibly over the knee, boot. I looked these up and I forgot what the style is called, but I found the style. Uh, for these, they have the zipper all the way going, going all the way up. And uh, let me see if I can find. Oh, yeah. Maybe they have the style name here, Lina, L-I-N-A. Ah, I could be right. Um, leather upper, and I'm trying to get the actual. Here we go. Oh yeah, you can actually see her really well. Kelsey Dagger. Oh, maybe you cannot see her very well. There we. go. Go. I've sold Kelsey Dagger shoes before relatively quickly. I just picked up another pair at my honey hole. So I do like this brand. Uh, I, I saw the comps for this all over the place, which I feel like is probably because people don't know what they have or they're just like tired of it. Anyway, these are seven and a half. Uh, nice boot. So love these. And then the last one is a little bit of an experiment. I looked up this brand, it's like an Italian, like legit Italian shoe brand that makes kind of like very colorful and just like a little bit like retro inspired out there shoes. It reminds me of, not a regular choice, but I think it's, oh, but but another Innocent Tail, um, which is ironically the brand that pops up when you Google this brand. Very bizarre. I don't know if they're like, I don't know. Um, if, if one of them bought the other, but the brand or designer on this is Galietti. I don't speak Italian, so don't come for me. This is what it looks like. And yeah, cannot find anything on these on like the American market, <laughs> pretty much. Um, but they're so cute. Look at these. Oh, sling back, open toe, very high heels, block heels, like a patent leather in yellow and white. I love these. These are adorable. They're a size 38. Um, they have a little bit of wear, but they're in such good shape. I was like, somebody needs these for like a cosplay dress up or just, I don't know, to wear their cute little pinup retro summer dress with the matching shoes. So if you're a size 38, which is probably like a seven and a half, I would say they look tiny, maybe more like a seven. Uh, then yeah, these might be the shoes for you. No idea how to price them. <laughs> because they they are Italian. Uh, they retail for like, I wanna say like in the 150s uh, euro. So I don't know, I'll probably start them at like 45 or something like that. We'll see, I haven't decided yet. I need to do more research. But yeah, brand that's hard to find on the internet, go figure. All right, and that was it. Uh, of course, I did not count anything. I also uh, had two more things that went straight into my kid's closet. He already wore them um, that are not in here, but also not that interesting, I don't think, for you guys. So um, that's the haul. I think I did pretty well, 60 bucks for all of that. And I do have some items in here, like, I don't know. If I always try to find like one item that will pay for the whole haul, uh, the Kelsey Dagger boots might. Who knows? Um, the Banana Republic coat might, who knows? But overall, I think once I sell like three to four pieces, everything's paid for. So happy with that, uh, happy with this haul, even though it started off a little bit like, mm, I don't know, bins don't feel good today. <laughs> but then I found good stuff. So I'm always happy when it's that way around. Um, I hope you guys had a good time. I hope you got maybe some work done while I was chatting with you. I will wrap this up right now. Um, but if you enjoy my content, I would love it if you subscribed or if you already are subscribed, but have friends who you think might enjoy my content, do share this video with them. You can like the video to give it more exposure 
exposure on YouTube. You can also hit the bell notification. That way you get notified every time I post something or every time I go live. Right now I do Relist and Relax every other Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Every once in a while I have to push it back a little bit because uh, mom life. But uh, that's where we list, relax, re <laughs> relax, list, relax, chat, hang out. And then on the other Friday night, so the ones in between my relist and relax schedule, I've just started to do what sold uh, lives for channel members only. Um, but after the live stream airs, I will cut down the what sold just to the relevant what sold portions and share that with you all, even if you're not a member as a regular upload. So I hope you enjoy that. If you want to be there live uh, as a channel member, you can. I have three different tiers. Just get the lowest one if you want to support the channel. If you want to hang out, um, it will give you most of the access. Uh, there are a few extra perks for higher level channel members. Um, you can check that out below. If you click the join button, it will give you an outline of uh, what I offer at each membership level. Long story short, I hope to see you soon in whatever capacity, in whatever shape or form, on whatever video. Get in the comments to let me know what your favorite piece was from this haul and I will see you very soon. Peace then. Cheers!